Well, good afternoon, Ventura. And to my friends on Facebook, as you can tell, this is not a live video. I had something else that was going on during this time, so I decided to pre-record today and then post at 2.30 so that you all can uh, watch at this regularly scheduled time. This past Monday night, I was a part of our bi-weekly elders meeting, and we were talking about pastoring and shepherding our own church. And in the midst of talking about that, one of the elders had stated what can happen in the midst of isolation. That he said that we as human beings can tend to dehumanize other human beings when we're not seeing them face to face. We can become more prone to take offense, we can become more angered, and then we can treat them as though they're not human beings. I can see how that can be the case. In the midst of times like these, especially when not only are we isolated, but we're experiencing certain stressors uh, with work and at home and relationships, if you, have, if you have other family members in your home or if you're all alone in home, we can have these stressors. There's also a wondering about the economy, money, work, concern for extended family members. And, and, and I think all of a sudden in the midst of this, our minds can become very focused on us. And when our minds become very focused on us, slyly, our flesh can emphasize us above others, and as a result, we dehumanize. We don't value other people's opinions or thoughts. We don't even value other people themselves. We might start to become more angsty and, and uh, um, snap at other people, even on social media, like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, or whatever means you use. Remember again Jesus' words when he talks about the difficulties of life. We can wonder, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? And Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now let's apply that to our circumstances. Maybe you're one of those people that you're starting to focus just more so completely on you, and therefore, in focusing on you, you're not seeking first the kingdom, you're seeking first your kingdom. And in seeking first your kingdom, that's going to lead towards difficulties in relationships with other people. That might lead to uh, becoming bitter, angry, or mocking towards others. So I want to take those words from that other elder and I want to I give a challenge, and I hope, I hope an encouragement, an exhortation to you who are watching. How can we challenge ourselves that we don't become, that, that we don't become those people who dehumanize others? Because the reality is, if we're seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, then we love God's glory. And as the Apostle James says, how can you? Praise God with your mouth and then put down people who are created in the image of God. If we are lovers of God, we love him and his image and therefore we are to love the image bearers. And isn't that what Jesus said? Love God, love others. Or Paul even expands this and Paul says, he says to us, if I can remember correctly, he says to uh, Love everyone, but especially those of the household of faith. He says to love believers, people who trust in Jesus, and love people who don't trust in Jesus. How does that work in the midst of this time period? First, love one another. Love fellow believers. There are a lot of genuine Christians around the globe. There's a lot of genuine Christians in the United States, there's a lot of genuine Christians that gather weekly with Ventura Baptist Church. And in the midst of those contexts, we have Christians who have various opinions. Various opinions on what's happening right now. Various viewpoints. How do you communicate with them? The Apostle Paul in Romans 14 says, don't judge and don't condemn. 
And when he's saying don't judge, don't come down on them with harshness, as though you're in charge. Christians are part of the kingdom of God. God loves those who are part of his kingdom as his children. Satan is the one who accuses the brethren. May we not follow in Satan's footsteps. Instead, as the Apostle Paul writes in Galatians, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. We can become a people who bite and devour fellow Christians. And what a, what a very sad and horrible testimony to the world. Christians, let's be careful, especially now when a lot of our communication is online. Let's be careful to give a testimony that Jesus' kingdom matters most and that we love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. So, especially the household of faith, Paul says, but he also says everyone, love everyone. Jesus taught us that we are to love our enemies. In Colossians chapter 3, and let me just find the passage. Colossians 3, he says to us in verse 8, but now, or he says in the beginning of the chapter, if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand. Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. Now, what does this have to do with loving others. A few verses down, he says, put all these things away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Be careful in our speech towards one another. Be careful in how we talk to the world around us. We have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, as he says, the knowledge, being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. If we're being renewed in God's image, then that means we care about his image and we care about the image bears and we care about our speech towards the world around us. And you say, well, doesn't that mean, are we supposed to correct if we think that, that they're wrong? Yeah. But Paul writes, I believe it's to Timothy, he says, correct your opponents with gentleness. Pray for your rulers and authorities that you might lead quiet and peaceable lives in this present age. But correct your opponents with gentleness. We must be careful in how we relate to the world around us. Now you could say, but then I'm going to be, I'm going to be abused. I'm going to be looked down upon. Yep. Blessed are you, Jesus says, when people treat you that way. Because that's exactly how Jesus was treated. And, and that leads me to another aspect of loving everyone. That includes governmental authorities. I know, this might hit a pressure point for many people. But I was reminded of Titus chapter 3 when I, uh, by another pastor. Oh, Titus chapter 3 is such a convicting uh, passage. And take time to study it. But Paul writes to Titus, to the people on the island of Crete, which would be calling them uh, to exercise a certain viewpoint about the Roman government. And he says, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, to show perfect courtesy to all people. What? What if they're an idiot? What if they're a fool? What if they are... Hold on. Didn't Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount that if you say raka, then it's as though you've murdered them? And what does raka mean? You fool. You idiot. Why are we treating people like that who are created in the image of God? They might be fools in the sight of God, but where's our compassion 
See, Paul goes on and he gives us the motivation for living this way. He actually shows us we live this way, not because we emphasize ourselves ultimately, but because we emphasize God. He says, this is why we do it. For, for, verse three, for means because we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but, because, but according to his own mercy. God has done this because of mercy. He was and continues to be patient with us, kind towards us, to the point that Jesus the Son took on human flesh and was murdered by human beings and took our sin on us. And in the midst of that even said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Ventura, the reality of the gospel, the reality of Jesus' statement to set our minds on the kingdom, or Paul saying, set our minds on things above, and the reality of God's hope and forgiveness towards us should cause us to love and value the image of God, God himself, and then image bearers of God, both those within our, within our brotherhood, those who are believers, and those who who do not follow Jesus Christ. I pray that what that elder said does not happen within Ventura and does not happen within the church of God. I pray we do not dehumanize human beings, but instead we would show a radical love that would lead people to see their need for the Savior, the need for a greater kingdom, and that we would be praising the Lord, whether we are victimized or whether, whether we are strengthened in other ways. May Jesus Christ be praised.